Hello, and welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 513. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I am Leslie, also known as you don't call me less. Today is Monday, December the 28th. Uh, we took last week off for the holidays. We hope you all had a good holiday. Yep. Or are still continuing to celebrate a, an excellent holiday because I know uh, Kwanzaa starts like it started this past week. So. Yeah. I hope it was a nice week regardless uh, whether you celebrate or not. Um, this is Get our last 2020 yarns. episode. Yeah, I'm totally, I'm super stoked about that, because <laughs> I need to see the end of 2020, my friend. Yeah, I think we all do. We are not getting along. We've been uh, frenemies not... this whole year. <laughs> oh. oh, not not the two of us, but me oh. in 2020. Okay, I was like, are we frenemies? Like, that's news <laughs> to me. I didn't realize that was the case. I, should probably... I wasn't speaking to you. I was speaking <laughs> metaphorically. Mm. We're frenemies with the year. That's a that's a new one. Frenemies with 2020. I don't know. There's been good things, but also really not good things. Yeah, they've been so. buried. It's hard to find the good things in this year. Yeah. Um, but as always, we persevere. We knit on, as we Elizabeth do. Zimmerman so okay. eloquently said. Um, would you like to go first? Um, sure. I am very, uh, very far into this. <laughs> so far, you can't even see it. So, uh, yesterday I cast on for a baby hat. Um, it's part of a series that I'm doing. So back in, I don't know, was it 2020? Jillian mm-hmm. Marino did several spin alongs, um, and this was the first one that she did. And if you you can go back into her blog and read all about them, they were super fun. Basically, you take a, a braid of top and you divide it into force, um, splitting it down vertically. And then you do different things with each fourth. So this was fractally spun. And then I have another one that was uh, like a marled spin. Um, and so I am knitting these into baby hats and it's funny because I spin, when you fractally spin, for those of you who aren't spinners, you divide your fiber a lot. So my fractal spin of this is much skinnier than my other three spins. And my marled spin is much thicker because with that you're holding fiber together. Right. So um, it's really, really interesting to see how things came out. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this project later. But I decided with my four skeins that I would knit them up into baby hats. So I can really see the differences. And this is Superwash Cordale in the Moscow Mule colorway that I spun from Into the World. Um, so I am knitting, and it's one of my favorite colorways of theirs. I think I've spun it like four or five times. But I also really like Superwash Cordale, which I don't think people can get their hands on right now, which makes me very sad. So that's the first thing on my needles. And the second thing on my needles is I picked back up the Karen Cake Baby Blanket. So Karen Cakes used to be a wool acrylic blend, and I thought they still were, but they switched over at one point to um, 100% acrylic. And so they come like this, and I'm using two of these. I've knit through one, and this is the second one. And I cast on 85 stitches, and I'm using size 10 and a half needles, and I'm just knitting in garter stitch. So that's half of it. So it's going to be around 30 by 30. It's just a nice um, baby blanket. It's pretty thick. So it makes a good like play mat type material Mm -hmm. um, for some tummy time. So yeah, that's on the needles. And I started that. Plus it's super wash so it can go in the car. It can go. Yeah, it can be dragged along the ground. It's 100% yeah. acrylic, so it's not super washed. It's acrylic, so it can be washed. Um, but, yeah, and then the last thing on my needles 
I have to find it. Oh, there it is. Is um, <laughs> the Knit Spin Farms um, Little Known Holiday Club in the Tolkien colorway. Apparently, I left off in the middle of a row. I've been knitting on these every time I get COVID tested. <laughs> Just the most ridiculous thing ever. Uh, but also, like, when I go to pick up groceries and I'm sitting there waiting or uh, Target pickup line is another one that I frequent. So all those places. So the first one's been done. Oh, and when I waited in line for an hour and a half to vote, I also knit on these then. So um, this is the first one. The second one got, I mean, I had just finished the toe. So it got some good progress this week. That wasn't all while you were waiting to get COVID tested, though, was it? 100%. Oh. Well, and also at Kerger. But um, so the time before this that I got exposed to COVID and I got COVID tested, um, our local health department has drive through testing. And last time I went, it is um, a two-tier process. So you drive up, they do like the fast test, the quick test, and then they do the test that they send off to the lab. And then you wait 15 minutes and they give you the results of the quick test. And then you're like on your way and you wait for the results. Uh, last time it was two to three days for the results of the other one. So this time when I drove up, there were lots of people. Um, and I was exposed at work again. And so there were lots of people in line, like uh, probably around 40 cars. And you have to make an appointment for this testing, too. I should also say that. So you have to fill out an online questionnaire. Um, and then they tell you if you qualify or not. So um, there were a lot of people. And so I sat... By the time I got through with the testing portion, it had been 45 minutes, I think. And then I sat another 15 to 20 minutes waiting for my test results. Um, so this was all, I mean, I'm sitting in a car in a line with my like, you know, car in park, my car turned off essentially. So um, yeah, I got a good bit of knitting done. And I tested negative for the quick. So I'm waiting on the results. And instead of it being two to three days because it's a holiday, they said seven to nine days Yeah. on the other. Um, but yeah, I need to stop keep, I need to stop getting exposed to COVID at work is the end of the story. But <laughs> I mean, that you know. would be easier if our government put in place a mask mandate for our state. But, you know. Yeah. Well, masks are required in schools, but um, we still have middle school sports going on. And if you've been watching the podcast for a while, I keep score for um, basketball and for volleyball. And this last time I was exposed, actually twice, I was exposed at a basketball game to a player that then tested positive the next day. And also a teacher whose classroom I was in and out of um, teaching a lesson, and she tested positive later that day. So I wanted to get tested to be on the safe side. I'm not going any place, but you know, just to be on the safe side. And so those three things, so the blanket, the little hat that's really not even a thing yet, and then the socks are what I have on my needles right now. That is what's going on with me. What's going on with you? Um I have got three things I'm working on. Um, the first is a blanket out of this yarn from Knit Picks called Fable Fur. Um, it's 100% acrylic, uh, polyester, sorry. And, and animals I'm, love it. Yeah, it's uh, it draws all the dogs to try to destroy it because it's got that texture of like a fuzzy toy. And for some reason, all the dogs want to destroy it. Um, so I can't leave it out. Like. My dogs have never messed with my knitting. My cats don't either. Um, if Fred is sitting in my lap and I'm pulling yarn and it goes right across his face, he'll play with it. But aside from that, he has no interest. Uh, but this, Fred's I can't. Your cat. Yeah. yeah, Fred's my cat. Um, this I have to put in a zippered bag if I'm not actively working on it. But so I just cast on 100 stitches and I'm doing it in garter stitch. 
um, it's warm, um, which is fine for me to knit because uh, it's cold outside. Um, right. I'm using a size 19 needle, um, which is a 15 millimeter. And I'm just knitting it in garter stitch. Um, I, I'm only like five skeins in right now, so I'll keep knitting it. And um, I don't know, it'll go to somebody who doesn't have animals, I'm guessing, because <laughs> everybody wants to destroy it. Even Pearl wants to destroy it. Yeah, so uh, Leslie brought it over here thinking it was just like a Neelix thing. To work and, on, yeah. Um, yeah, to work on, and it was not just a Neelix thing. No. I couldn't work on it um, while I was there. Pearl tried um, to take it out of her hands and steal it like yeah. a thief. Not a very good thief, though. No. So the other thing that I'm working on, I cast on this week. So um, about a month back, maybe a little bit longer, we did an order from Brooke at Philly Spun. Yeah. And I got a set of minis, her pride collection, um, minis in sport. And there's 13 total. Um, there's It's like asexual, aromantic, gender fluid, um, BIPOC inclusive. Uh, there's all sorts of, I mean, there's 13. These are and hand wound the little balls. And I should point out that she sells these year round. This isn't just like yeah. a June thing. This is a year round thing that she does. I linked to it in the show notes to the set that I got. Uh, so I just did a provisional cast on. I couldn't find a pattern that I felt like because these are variegated. Um, they're based on the flags of each of the um, particular groups. And I couldn't really find a pattern that I thought would work well for all of them. So I just sort of took a page out of our friend Amy's book who um, cast on, or was it last year or the year before that she did that litmus cowl? Uh, I think it was not last March, but the March before when she visited us. And this Very is awesome. Amy of Stranded Dye Works. Lady Amy, please. <laughs> Um, so what I did was I did a provisional cast on and cast on 64 stitches and I'm using a size seven needle um, and these are sport. Uh, seven is a four and a half millimeter and I'm just alternating and I'm just picking, um, picking the colors at random just to make sure they have contrast. So, but I'm, I'm marking them so I can remember what they are. So the purple and gray is, uh, asexual the green and gray is a gender and then up here the purple and yellow is intersex and the pink and blue is transgender so I like i'm just it's um almost pooling more than yeah it is kind of flashing and i like lights. it though yeah so I'm just alternating every two rows uh, over and over and over. And I'll just knit it until. So the thing is, it's going to be. Um, I'm alternating the two colors, but there's an odd number of colors. There's 13 yeah. rather than, you know, 12 or 14. So once I get to um, the last set of two, I'm going to save the. Uh, BIPOC inclusive pride for last and then that's my just favorite do a solid block of that and that'll yes. join um join these together and then because I did a uh, provisional I'll just kitchener this raw end here to the live end of the other end of this oh so. man I was just thinking it could be cool I know you hate feather and fan but to do like that and like a feather and fan just yeah. add some like, additional interest or something too that would be it's a good idea I mean I don't love doing feather and fan but it's got its place so. or something else like netting or you know something just fun and different with that section yeah no I like that idea so yeah so this is um my in the round project I can't work on it for really long periods of time because I'm using the chow goo, the little um, short needles that uh, they come in a set 
uh, and they're primarily what I use them for is like sleeves. Yeah, they're the twist minis. It's the yeah. blue. Are you using the blue or the red set? The blue set. What color is the cord? Okay. The blues, um, larger needles, like fours through eights, I think. And yeah. the red, which is what I'm using for this baby hat, um, is zeros through threes. Yeah. No, I, the day I knit a sleeve on a size zero is the day I jump off a cliff. It's not for me. <laughs> well, um, I mean, sometimes with fingering weight yarn, like a three, I mean, this is a three. A three, maybe. That would be the smallest needle I would ever do a sleeve on. Unless it was for, like, a miniature of some kind. <laughs> um, but uh, I can't knit on this for long periods of time because the way that I knit, I, I use my whole hand to hold onto the needle. And because there is no needle shaft past about my ring finger, when I hold these, my pinky gets a cramp in it. So um, I can only knit on this. Are you using the short tips on both sides? Well, I'm using the longer tips, but even the longer okay. tips are I'm still pretty only, short. Yeah. yeah, three and a half, four inches maybe. So, and I'm used to, you know, a five or six inch needle. So, yeah. So that's the other thing I'm working on. And the last thing is a little bit of a tale of woe. Um, Uh-oh. It's the squares. Oh, yes. I've heard this tale of woe because we did a Patreon event yesterday. So, you guys, if you've watched any episode in the last year, Year. you've probably seen me working (laughs) on this. Um, So, the pattern is called uh, Giant Granny Patches. It's by Sandra Paul. Um, And it's a free pattern on Ravelry and probably on her blog, too. I don't know. Uh, but it called for making a lot of individual squares. Like I think it's 800 or something individual squares. Um, it called for them to be two and a half inches square. I ended up making them three and a half inches square because, you know, why would I follow rules? That's just silly. Yeah. And then you seam them all together. I chose to seam them in groups of four by four. So it's a gr- each big square is 16 total mini squares um and the way that the pattern is written is actually a join as you go um or that's an option so that you have less seeming to do later but of course again why would i do that that would just be logical and ridiculous um (laughs) why would i do this thing that would make my life so much easier so although if you did that you would have had to do different colors like pick a color up and you know so the way that I did this, um, the pattern called for a different brand of yarn, um, Stylecraft DK, I think. And I used the yarn was a, it's a, it was a local Michaels brand. I want to say it's like magnificent or amazing. or I can't remember what the name, it was a hundred percent acrylic, whatever it was. Amazing. I feel like it's got an eye in it, but I can't remember what it was anyway. So it's I used by this, like threads and loops, right? Yeah. Yeah. I use this 100% acrylic blend or uh, yarn and got 17 colors and uh, did some math, which should be your first flag. But <laughs> so I substituted out the color um, numbers that she used for my color numbers and then created this Excel um, chart. So that I knew that, okay, the red square, that's color number 11, and that's going to show up in this square, and that square, and the square, and that square. So that's how, I, that's how I chose to, to, you know, keep everything straight. But in my head, I got, I decided somehow that it was five um, sets of squares. So each set is 16. So it was five of these down, and then seven across. Which would be 35 total squares. Which would be 35, right? Um, And so I, you know, when it came time to seam a new square, I would pull up my Excel chart and I would say, okay, I need colors, you know, one, two, three, four. I need, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I would put them in groups like this. Um, So let me pull this out. I'll just show you a couple. 
So like this is number five, square number five, and square number five uses, or you know, the first row uses these four colors, right? And so I would get a set, uh, each one of these has four in it, and I would get four total, you know, sets together. And so once I had four of these sets together, that was a square. Anyway, I wasn't actually paying attention, really. So, like, I'd done the first four. And so when it was time to do number five, I just went to the bottom one on that first column instead of counting one, two, three, four, five. Long story short, I had finished the first three columns before I realized there was actually six in each column. So I didn't actually finish the first three columns. I had skipped the fifth one in each column and I'd gone one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. 10, 12. So I'd skip them. So I had to do a bunch of rearranging. I spent like four hours just figuring out what happened and relabeling things. But now Didn't I've got you have to re crochet some squares or something yeah, too. Because I, I went ahead and put groups of everything together. And there were five colors where I was short one square. So I had to go back and crochet five squares, which didn't take long, but they don't take very long. I'm glad you didn't get rid of your extra yarn. Yeah. I probably will now. I'll give it to my sister because she, they crochet a bunch of stuff at her church. But um, yeah. Uh, so Tale of Woe, I thought I had 22 squares done. I actually had 17 squares done. So that end keeps getting further away somehow. But you um, seemed to square today. I did. I seemed one square today. It took over an hour. Um, because when I do, I, I, I trim off all the ends that I possibly can so that it's, you know, as clean as possible. Um, but yeah, so uh, this might be done by Stash Dash 2021, maybe. I don't know. That's a good goal. Um, it would be a lot of yardage if it did, if I did. <laughs> yeah, it would. So, You'd kill it. There's that. And that's it. Like, I don't have anything finished this week. I came off call on Christmas. So, um, and it wasn't a terrible on call week, actually. It's probably one of my quietest ones, but, uh. I don't I, know. It seemed like you were getting very little sleep. Yeah, well, that's primarily because. My husband snores. I snore too. <laughs> so, like, I say all this with a grain of salt, but when I'm on call, I get called all the time if I'm on call, usually, like in the middle of the night. And so, normally I sleep with earplugs, but I can't do that when I'm on call because I can't guarantee I'd be able to hear it, even though I've got it turned all the way up. Like, it, I have slept through it before, but so I have to sleep without earplugs. And Michael snores. And so I don't sleep great when I'm on call, regardless of whether or not I actually get called. My God, this is just boring me to tears. I just want to go jump <laughs> off a bridge. What is? Just recalling this, my life. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture my, like, 20-year-old size 8 fun-loving self talking about being on call and her husband snoring and crocheting <laughs> squares. I'm just, the perspective is it's sober. A, I mean, it, it, it is a sobering perspective. <laughs> okay, anyway, I finished I nothing this week. 2020 went to, to anyone's plans. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> Please take it away. You have things to show, right? I have finished things, and I sent Leslie a bunch of pictures because I mailed them all out for uh, gifting earlier. Well, I mailed a good bit out. So um, I decided I um, keep my couch. I had some present knitting to do, some gift knitting to do, but also, like, all my works in progress pay like, bags kind of live on my couch, which is fine because I live alone and Pearl yeah. lives them alone. And, um, but it had gotten to the point where I had like maybe eight or nine bags on the couch. And I was like, there's a lot of stuff on the couch. <laughs> there's not really room for anyone on the couch at this point, uh, except in like my little nest that I make. So, um, 
I wanted to finish my gift knitting and get those off the couch. And then I've been trying to like clear off the couch essentially. So finish some whips that um, have been lingering and hanging out and just need to be finished. So um, the very first thing that I finished was a pair of Vanilla's The New Black Socks, which Leslie is going to put in a picture of. Through the magic of technology. Yes. And um, even though I mailed them a good bit before the holidays, I mailed them last Monday, maybe. Um, They still have. So it's been a week. But the U.S. Postal Service is kind of behind. I'm a little bit worried that they're not going to fit my brother-in-law. I don't know why. I just they fit me so they should fit him. But, you know. Anyway, I finished a pair of Vanilla's The New Black Socks out of Fully Spun Postscript Fingering in the Mold Wine colorway. I loved, loved, loved the finished product. I think they're gorgeous. They were knit on size zero needles. As sick as you are of hearing me talk about my crocheted blanket, I'm sick of hearing how much you love that colorway. I love it. And she's sold out and I can't get more and it makes me sad. But it is so, so pretty. Um... So those went to my brother-in-law. And then um, way back in March of 2020, I actually test knit for um, Joanna Johnson's new Little Women Knits book. So my name's in another book, which is always kind of fun, like in the back section under test knitters or, you know, it's always kind of fun. So I had knit the telegrams from the window hat and I had knit a mitten and a half. And um, that's all I needed to do, like, because... Once you finish one mitten, the second one's basically identical. Yeah. So it had just been hanging out. It was out of um, some hip strings yarn. And I think I would knit it on fours and fives. And so I finished the second one and um, mailed it out to my grandmother for her Christmas present. I also knit her a little gnome using the no fun like gnome fun pattern and some leftovers from... Um, Leading Men Fiber Arts in their non superwash base, their worsted weight one. And um, I knit one of those and put little like the poly pellets in it, which really I need to. Um, and I knit those on size three needles. I really need to put those in like a smaller bag because they kept trying to escape through the stitches. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah, but that went to my grandmother and she's just going to set it someplace. And so it's not like a kid's going to chew on it or anything like that. And in the second one, I did not put poly pellets. I just put stuffing and I made sure everything was knotted really well because that went to my sister's cat, Carl. (laughs) So he got a Christmas (laughs) present too. He got a little gnome to carry around. Um, So that was some gift knitting that left. I also finished a little pumpkin hat that had been sitting there for a while just waiting for this green part like the decreases to be done Mm. and then the little green and the leaf so that got finished um just so people know out of one skein of malabrigo rios i knit two of the pumpkin hats in the smallest size and then one in the one year size and i had a smidge maybe like three grams left over so you definitely can get three hats um if you're doing size size yeah I mean, this is like a zero to three month size, maybe zero to six month size. And then there's the six, there's like the year size, which might be actually the third size up. So that is done. And that is going in the gift box. And then um, I had a bunch of just like one bag that was all um, stuff to knit baby hats out of. And when I started the Jillian Marino's um, spun thing, I had these mini skeins that I labeled using Mm -hmm. uh, Tyvek tags. And so I decided to cast these on into baby hats. And so um, the very first one, this one, and also my dividing of the fiber is not super even. So some of them I'm adding like commercial yarn to. So this one was spun as it comes. So when a braid comes, let me open a braid of fiber, a bag of fiber. Um, And this is top, so everything is going in the same direction. And it depends on how the dyer dyes it, but a lot of times there's like a repetition to how it's dyed. Yeah, so it's like like laid out sort of in an S shape. 
and then they'll dye it in like sections yeah so this one has the blue then it goes to this brown then it goes back to blue and then the purpley there is a purpley bit up here too and then the brown again so it repeats so spin as it comes means that i divide this in half vertically and i start with the same end so if i divide this in half i would start with this end on both bobbins and so that's what this is so this is spun as it comes. So you see that there's like a lot of places where the colors match up, which there should be. Um, so that blue's really, really popping there. Um, the, the second one that I did was flipped. So, so you started the, from end well, A on one and then end B on the yeah. other. Yeah. So one of them starts with this end and the other one starts with this end and see, they're not going to match up. There'll be points where they match up probably, especially in this braid, but not always. So this one is flipped and I actually like, I, I rarely spin flipped, but I kind of like that one better. I like them both. And then the one that I'm working on is fractal where you divide one half, um, you divide it in half, and then um, one gets divided into thirds from there. But you spin from the same end. Um, but there's just short repeats on one side. So yeah, I just think it's really, really fun. But these were knit on size five needles. I cast on um, 64 stitches, did like an inch and a half of ribbing, knit to the hat was five inches total, and then just did decreases like knit six, knit two together, knit around, knit five, knit two together, knit around, you know, and so on. So yeah, I'm excited to see how the fractal turns out. And then I have that marled one as well. And then I have some other um, like leftover bits and bobs in that bag as well for other baby hats. And then, um, the blanket was on the couch, but it's moved into here. And the last thing are the Halloween socks. And then the couch will be cleared off. So yeah, and then I can start new projects. Which will be nice. I can still start new projects, and I probably will. <laughs> the couch is getting... It's got a lot... I mean, it has one, two, three, four... Five less bat, well, four bat less bags on it now than I did when I got off on the 18th. So I think that's some good progress. Yeah, powering through. I'm trying to. My mojo has been pretty well. I shouldn't say mojo. My motivation to do things has been pretty low. So yeah, I think that's a pretty common theme this year. But I have been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> I've been making lots of snow people and getting large snowflakes. But yeah. I got to play uh, Toy Day, which was fun. And there's some New Year's Eve thing that's going on too that I'll have to look up later. But yeah. So that's what I've been finishing. So I've done a good bit, I would say. I'm happy with the progress that I've made. Yeah. You've done some spinning too, right? I have. Um, so I got three advent kits this year, spinning advent kits. Um, one is the hip strings one. And you got the yarn version of that, correct? I actually have it somewhere over here. And um, after watching... So one cool thing that Hipstrings does with their event calendar is every day they do um, like a YouTube live mm -hmm. and they talk about the fibers it comes out and they talk about how they're spinning it and different ways that you can spin it, which I found really, really helpful. Another cool thing that happened was um, both Nick and Jill, who are the owners of Hipstrings, they spin in much different ways. Um, how they like he does he rolls a die and does random and it's kind of like what happens happens and she um, last year spun an order and then chain plied and then they both knit um, one of the shift like the cow mm -hmm. or the shawl. shift shawl. 
shawl. It's the shawl. And um, out of their yarn in different ways. And it was really cool to see how it spun up. But um, so I spun their advent calendar. So this is six total ounces. And the way I did it is I spun odd days on one bobbin and even days on another bobbin. And then it kind of gradiates. It's supposed to be a gradient. Um, so mine won't gradient much, but um, it'll quasi do that. Um, it'll kind of like do a fade thing. Theirs is based on um, base 12, right? Yeah. So how did you choose... What were A and B in the odd? No, oh, A was like, I just assigned them numbers. So oh, okay. Like A was the next number in order, and then B was the next one. Um, and so I'll have a two ply at the end of this. I thought about chain plying, but because they're prep, some of them are bats, some of them are not. Um, it's different types of prep. I knew that I would not get a consistent spin with those for me. Yeah. I just, um, I knew that that wasn't going to happen, so I decided to just do a two ply instead. So this is on what's going to be applied next because I've run out of bobbins for my starling, <laughs> and then, which is like the story of my life. And then I opened my nest advent calendar, and I spun the first two days of that. And those were just like random. So everyone I, from what I'm reading, everyone has a different one. So the first two days are very like neutral. And then I started opening the third day and it was one of these. Oh. And everything else was like super bright except for two other ones that are kind of, one's kind of neutral and one's like right on that neutral. Like I can make it work as a neutral. Um, it's still got like some subdued colors in it. So I'm going to spin these four and do a two ply. So the first two, the first bobbin's done and this will be the second bobbin. And then these I'm going to strip down and divide up and do um, a three ply for socks. That should be fun. So it'll have like shorter repeats. Yeah. So, and these are all super wash merino. So um, the hip strings had all different fiber types, too. They all had silk, but they were all different. This is all superwash merino. And then um, the third that I got is Ingle Nook, which is all like bats, but I haven't mm -hmm. opened it yet. And I'm going to do mini skeins with that because I got a secondary braid. Um, they sold like a contrast braid that I think will be good to do like some color work with yeah whether something that like that the miss babs kits would use yeah exactly so yeah that's um my spinning i applied some today but it's still on the bobbins i'm hoping that i will have a pound plied to show you guys next uh wound off and washed and everything next time we record we'll see do you have a pound on bobbins waiting to be plied Oh, I have over a pound waiting to be applied. Add the six ounces. Leslie is shaking her head. Um, I don't like plying. Plying is not my favorite. I find it super boring. So, um, and that's funny because it used to be my favorite part. But, I'm, I don't know. 2020 has flipped that for me. I just find it boring. So, um, I applied eight ounces today. I applied four ounces and then four ounces um, and then I have the six ounces of the Advent from Hip Strings done. I have the um, Hello Yarn from last time we recorded to ply. And I spun a bat as well to ply. So um, the Christmas bat we got from Canada. Mm -hmm. The vintage holiday one. That's what I was working on earlier. I finished the singles for that, so that'll get plied. I would love to spend like a pound by Friday, like of singles. I know it's crazy, and so like there's no well, it's not crazy. It's just like overachieving, so it won't happen. But I feel like you should focus on the plying part. And then... no, <laughs> <laughs> that's no fun. You're no fun, Leslie O'Neill. I mean, that is not news to me. So. <laughs> 
I gotta take my motivation where I can get it. And right now it's knitting baby hats and spinning singles. But I would like to get back on my match list and finish the singles for the sweater spin. Because I only have like seven ounces left to spin. Yeah. So I need to do that. And then um, I can actually use that wheel for other things. What a um, novel concept. I know, right? And um, especially since I have a ton of bobbins for my shocked wheels, which is why I can never, I can keep going and going and going. <laughs> and never run out. And then I, when like, I do you think I'm going to run out, I'll just place an Acre Works order. I was going to say, <laughs> like, every time Laura sees Aiden at a show, it's like, oh, I'll take a couple of these. It doesn't have to be at a show. It, it's uh, like, oh, Aiden posted online. I think I need some more bobbins. He does supporting small businesses. <laughs> I am small local business. I mean, it's about as local as we get. Local to my parents and AcreWorks. The people at AcreWorks, all of them, just not Aiden, are like the most wonderful human. Oh, being. they're they're wonderful humans. I don't. I'm not discounting that at all. Also, when I buy more bobbins, then I don't have to ply. <laughs> And they make bobbins for us all of my wheels. This is like, why would I bother washing my underwear when I can just buy new underwear? <laughs> I ply sometimes. I mean, I do. I I want to go back and see how much yarn I've finished this year. I'm curious. You should try to finish as much as possible this week to bump up that number. Why? It's already going to be... For high. You, you can't count singles as finished yarn. It's not finished. No, it's not finished. I wouldn't count it. I don't know. You're very gold driven. Make that number higher than it is. I bet you I've spun over 12 pounds this year. I'm sure you have. I, I'm. You spin a million times more than I do. Just. You're so close. Like plying is the thing that takes the least amount of time out of all the steps. Yeah, but it's the least amount of fun. I don't know. Right, you gotta be a dream killer, Leslie O'Neill. I don't feel like this is in that category <laughs> of dream killing. Uh, this is just you being practical and me being fanciful. And it's all I'm also thinking, I wonder if Laura would ever seem a crochet blanket. No, she would not. Nope. She would never <laughs> She would never create a blanket that needed that much seaming. <laughs> or if I did, I would barter someone else to do it. Yeah. You are talking to the person, the last, no, like the third to last log cabin that I knit had like a hundred ends and it just sat on my couch with the ends knotted. And every time I came over, I would just weave in a few more. And then Humberto pooped on it. <laughs> so then I had to weave in all the ends to wash it. Back in oh, the day, Humberto. I know, right? Oh, so funny. Anyway, I gotta no. I'm going to embrace my motivation to spin singles until I run out of bobbins. And you're forced and to fly. I run out of wheels for bobbins, and I have to fly. That's what's going to happen. I also have three sweater spins to apply. Once Again, I finish the singles. You're like, why would you not? Like, all right. So for reading, what I've been reading <laughs> is. Um, I've been rereading the Dragonkin series by G.A. Aiken. Ooh, that's a good one. Are you listening to that or are you reading it? I'm both. I'm, I'm like alternating okay. between the two. Um, I'm, I'm on the fourth like, book, listening which is the. To it which is the Kita book, um, which is not my favorite, but... Um, which one is that? The Kita, Ragnar and Kita. Kita, the red-headed, like... Oh, the sister. Serpent. Yeah. Who's secretly a spy slash yeah. assassin. Spoiler! Um, so that's male, like female. in the first chapter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's male, female fantasy. Um Slash romance. Yeah. Paranormal. Yeah. Romance. Um, well, fantasy romance. 
Um, and then I had already listened to Mount Fitzroy, which was the sequel to Earthcore, which is a sci-fi novel by Scott Siegler. Um, I guess it has some tie-ins with another series that he did, uh, which is like a global pandemic. Um, but they got it under control in three months. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I guess it has some tie-ins with that, but I, I never read that one, so. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was pure sci-fi, no romance or anything. And it was good. It was interesting. Um, uh, that's I, I'm sort of re-listening to My Dad Wrote a Porno again. Like, I'm always... In between audiobooks, I'll listen to a couple of episodes, you know, when I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to listen to next. It's like a palate cleanser for me at this point. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, they're not coming back with their regular episodes until May. What the hell? James, Jamie, and Alice. I am disappointed. What else are you doing right now? Um, <sighs> surviving 2020. Dude, should, they could uh, be making Lainey- money off of ads and stuff. Like... I mean, that is true. But whatever. It's but their they, life. They do, right? Not yeah, real jobs. In they're that all way, like they... in the entertainment Job. industry. Jamie and Alice are both producers. I'm sorry, James is a producer. Alice is like a radio personality and producer. And then Jamie does editing and some other behind the scenes kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, they do all have, quote, real jobs. So, um, but I assume those jobs must have some flexibility because they can take off a year at a time and go tour. So, well, maybe they can do it from the road or their freelance. What have you been reading? Um, I am still listening to Wildfire. I took a break and listened to The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper. Uh, Wildfire by Alana Andrews is a male-female paranormal romance. And then The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper is an older fantasy that's geared towards middle grade. It has time travel in it, which is usually not my jam. But it's one that I grew up with my mom reading to me. So it's And it takes place at Christmas in um, England. And I don't know, it's just, it's my jam. So I listened to that, and now I'm back to listening to Wildfire. Um, And I read Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. Highly recommend. That is an adult male-male contemporary romance. And it's just one of those ones that will make you laugh out loud. It's super funny. Um, I really liked their Spires series. Mm -hmm. So I think it's Alexis Hall. It is. Okay. Because the um, first one is like for real, um, and that's male male sort of contemporary romance with BDSM elements in it. And the second one I think is Glitterland, Glitter something. No, oh, I'll have to relist. I'll have to reread those. So, because um, I enjoyed this one. Yeah, but yeah I like Alexis Hall as an author. Yeah, this one came out a while back, and I've um, I don't know. I've been struggling to read this year, so. Um, yeah, and I also finished all four of the Fence graphic novels, which are young adults, mm-hmm. uh, Slow Burn, Male Male, Lovers, well, hate, like, hatr- haters to friends to, there haven't been lovers yet, but yeah, ha- rivals to friends, I would say, is the best category for it, so, yeah, um, those I'm out of those, so I need them to make more <laughs> right now, please. Yep, I like that. There's also um, a book like a uh, fiction adaptation for a young adult that I read as well, but that's not as good as the graphic novels. I felt like so, um, anyway. So that's what I have been reading. Um, yeah, you've been watching anything interesting. Um, we watched the Great British Bake Off holiday episodes, which I, the Dairy Girls one was very funny. The Dairy Girls is hilarious. It's a show on Netflix about Ireland in the 
um, mid nineties. Um, there's a lot of political strife, but it's sort of seen through the lens of these teenage girls in a Catholic school and the head nun is my favorite. Um, <laughs> Also learned how to actually say Siobhan and Sorsa. Is that how it was? Sorsa, I think. It spelled I am S-A-I-R-O-S-E. the queen of messing up stuff. R O S E. It's an Irish name. I think it's Sorsa. And then Siobhan is S I O B H A N. For some reason, I have a really hard time tying the uh, the sound with those words, but or with those names, but. I think I got them now. Yeah. So that was really um, funny. What else yeah, have you been watching? Yeah, that was super funny. Um, I've been watching a ton of holiday films. The ones that, like the claymation ones that mm-hmm. I always watch. Like uh, The Year Without a Santa Claus. And um, I also watched all four of the Muppets holiday films. So Muppet Christmas Carol, Muppet Family Christmas, which is my favorite. And you can find on YouTube. Uh, Letters from Santa, and then there's another one that's like a spoof of It's a Wonderful Life. Um, so yeah, I've just, I mean, I've just really been sitting in quiet and enjoying it and recharging my batteries for the rest of the school year for 2021. Yep. I can't believe the school year is half over already, which is, I mean, it went. Very, very quickly, I feel like. I don't know. It's just been a weird year, time-wise. It has been. It's either going very fast or very slow. But, yeah. That has been it for me. I've been thinking about goals for 2021. I think we can discuss that on the next podcast. Yeah, it'll be the first of the year, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, We've never been sticklers for the rules, so. Yeah. Why start now? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is this is a uh, a signing off for 2020. Thank yeah. goodness. Um, to all of our um, Patreon supporters, we thank you sincerely. Yes, um, we have a Patreon event coming up Wednesday night. Correct. Yep. Correct at 6:30 Central Time. And um, we're going to be trying our hands at throwing pottery on tiny little kids' wheels. From it's gonna Amazon. Be, it's going to be terrible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so every month um, for our Patreon supporters, we do what's called a fail along. We try some craft that we've either never tried, haven't done in years, or vaguely familiar with. Um, we both try it. And it's almost always a failure. Um, but you know we and fail some of us fail quicker than others so that we can do what we enjoy yeah some of us fail intentionally after about 20 minutes so that then we can knit or uh, spin <laughs> um, uh, and then it just turns into a virtual knit night essentially but uh, <laughs> and then we also do a virtual knit night mm-hmm. on Sunday oh. the last Sunday of the month um but yeah, that's I think that's all I've got. Okay. And um we'll uh see you next year, I guess. Yeah, we'll see you in 2021. Bye, Bye y'all. Bye, y'all.